The purpose of this short video is to tell you a little bit about the life of Saint Shavra, an Indian saint. He was the founder of two religious congregations, one for men, the Congregation of the Carmelites of Mary Immaculate, and one for women, the Third Order of Descalced Carmelites. He was born in Kainakari, in the district of Alapi in Kerala, India. He was born on the 10th of February, 1805, the sixth child of two very pious Catholic parents, Mary and Kuriakos. He began his primary school education at the age of five, and in 1818 entered the diocesan seminary, where he started his formation for the priesthood. He was ordained on the 29th of November, 1829, by Maurelius Stabolini, the vicar apostolic of Verapoli. At the age of 66, after a grace-filled and holy life, he was called to his eternal reward on the 3rd of January, 1871, and was buried at St. Philomena's Ashram in Kunamal. His immortal remains were, however, transferred in 1889 to the mother house of the Congregation of the Carmelites of Mary Immaculate in Mananam. St. Shavra's spirituality was based on the triple roots of the Carmelite order, the Oriental Church, and Indian traditions. His motto was to live for the sanctification of others, as well as for your own sanctification. He was deeply drawn by the greatness of God and the ingratitude of man. He meditated always on the love and the mercy of God, which helped him to be able to call God my dear father. He had three great devotions in his life. The first was to the Holy Eucharist and was the basis of his spirituality. He spent many hours before the Blessed Sacrament in Eucharistic adoration and was well known for introducing and spreading the 40-hour devotion in Kerala. His second devotion was a Marian devotion, one which began in his early life. And he is attributed with the spread of the rosary and the, the, the scapula, and also known for the introduction of Marian devotions in May to the area of Kerala. Also central to his spirituality was the Holy Family. And when Kuriakos became a religious, he took the name of Kuriakos Elias of the Holy Family. On his death, he entrusted his congregation to the intercession and protection of the Holy Family. In fact, he, on his deathbed, he was also able to say that by God's grace and the special help of the Holy Family, he never lost his baptismal grace. So what were St. Shavra's charisms? Being a multifaceted person and a man of great vision far beyond his time, his charism can be said to be based on two things, spiritual and social. The spiritual was born out of a great sense of loss of prayer and discipline with the absence of the tapas pavan in the Kerala area. And so he started several seminaries for the formation of good priests. He wanted to bring about a spiritual renewal even amongst priests and so started preaching retreats. He even started preaching retreats for lay people in their parishes, a concept that wasn't taken up again until the Second Vatican Council. He also started a printing press, the first Catholic printing press in Kerala, and so was able to make available to the people religious and devotional mat matters and books on good faith and good morals. Also in his spiritual reform, St. Shavra formed the two congregations which I mentioned previously. In 1831, he found the one for men, the Carmelites of Mary Immaculate, which today number 3,000 members spread in 27 countries. They continue his noble mission and charism. They work in pastoral care, schools, health care and social work. On the 13th of February 1866, St. Shavra also founded the Third Order of Carmelites Discalced, which after his death separated into two distinct congregations, the Congregation of Theresian Carmel and the Congregation of Mount Carmel. Together they now number nearly 7,000 members spread throughout the world. But St. Shavra's spirituality also had a social dimension. 
He considered education to be very important. And so he started the first Catholic Sanskrit school in 1846 in Mananam, where irrespective of caste, creed and color, people could come together, sit together and study together. This was in a time where discrimination based on caste was prevalent. He was a man of great vision and ahead of his time. He also started the Charitable Institute of the Confraternity of St. Joseph for a happy death. This institute cared for the sick, the aged and the destitute, taking care of them and helping them prepare for a happy death. Being convinced also of the importance of education for all people, St. Shavra, while he was the Vicar Apostolic of the Syro-Malabar Church in Varapoli Diocese, decreed in 1864 that every parish needs to have a parish school. Thus the Kerala Society and even the Indian Society at large are deeply indebted to St. Shavra for the many, many in educational institutions, starting with kindergarten schools, reaching all the way up to universities and medical colleges, especially in Kerala. This formed the basis of a good education for the people of India. What was the last miracle that allowed Blessed Shavra to become Saint Shavra? It was the healing of a young girl called Mary Jose in India who was born with a very serious squint. Through the intercession of St. Shavra, asked for by her parents and family, she received healing of the squint without the necessary operation. The medical professionals and experts of the time declared this to be a miracle, that it is impossible to heal a squint without an operation. St. Shavra reminds all of us of who we are called to be as the followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. People who live a spirituality based in Eucharist, based on the protection of Our Lady, founded in the Holy Family, but also people who have to be people of our time, in our time, and deal with the social and moral issues of the time. Saint Chavre lived his faith because he knew his faith. And so we ask for his intercession. Saint Chavre, pray for us. <laughs>